Okay, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to run through our P6QA tool. We've got a few new features in this version, so I'll touch on them as we go through. Uh, I'm Nicole Jarden. I am joining you from Calgary, so a little cold this morning. And um, I'm the founder and CEO of Emerald. With me is Sue Familia from Wyoming, also cold, and uh, she'll be helping out with questions as we go through. And I'm glad to see some people from the Philippines a little warmer. Wish I was there. Let's touch on why we built P6QA. Okay, so some of the common struggles that we found uh, with our clients were just making sure that the quality of what they were putting together in their P6 was nice and consistent. Okay. Um, very common to have a wide range of skills, wide range of backgrounds, even just wide range of uh, needs within P6. So more than once uh, we were brought in to critique schedules. It's still part, part of what we do at Emerald as our, in our consultancy business. And it was often frustrating because some, the schedules often were not um, necessarily of the best quality, especially if you're uh, asked to do a risk analysis. And we thought, you know, there's got to be a better way for some of the common, simple things to be addressed uh, by the users. So that's really why we built P6QA, was to try and enable our clients to have a better standard uh, out of the gate uh, for their schedules. That's really why it started. So. Um, why don't I go ahead and ask a quick question here? Because um, we have different reasons why people need QA. And one of them is if you're critiquing schedules. So let's just see how many folks, uh, if you want to answer, um, are critiquing schedules. So they're receiving schedules from an outside company. Could be a contractor, could be an engineering firm, could be a smaller vendor. And you know you want to be able to get a quick idea of how well put together this schedule really is. Okay, so a few people chose to vote, which is fine. We'll share the results. And just for your information, we do share our results on our website for all the polls that we do during a year. So you can go look at that. It's pretty interesting. So that's really why we built P6QA. Okay, so we want it to get people to have better schedules, more reliable, more consistent. Um, you know, different people giving you different schedules could have quite a different strategy on what they put together with very little information and then way too much information. So the idea is to try and bring it through some consistency. And you want to avoid the bottlenecks for the reviews. So some of our clients, the senior schedulers, were the ones that would review and often they were too busy. So that's partly why we were being brought in, just to fill the gap. So we were trying to get these, these uh, bottlenecks out of the way. And then what we have also is many of our clients uh, run programs for their uh, clients. Like a, we have a few Department of Transportation clients and they wanted to make sure that they were doing a consistent, um, unbiased, if you will, approach a strategy. So they not only did they have specifications, but they wanted to make sure they were following them. So that's another reason why we put this together and had some business process adherence as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you some standard um, industry standard uh, validations, but I'm also going to touch on some business process validations. So we've created quite a few. We've got hundreds of them. Um, and if you want it P6QA, you don't have to deploy all of them. You can pick and choose the ones that make sense for your, for your schedule. So I'm going to ask one more quick question. Um, how do you currently check your schedules? Do you do it manually? Do you get someone to come in and help you? Do you do stuff in Excel? Um, do you have a different tool? out there. Some of these tools are very expensive and they're really exclusive. So you wouldn't be able to kind of deploy them the way that we do. Um, 
So we deploy P6 QA to everyone in P6. It's not just to your senior and a third party tool. Okay, so that's a big difference. We wanted it to be something um, that you're able to use ongoing and everyone gets to critique, self critique. So that was a big, big driver in the way we built our tool. Okay, it was to help you build your skills. It wasn't so that you could get critiqued every few months um, and not have it a living, breathing um, tool to help you. Okay, so that was really a driving force in how we put together our tool. And then one more quick one. How often do you critique your schedules? So we have clients that critique schedules every week, every two weeks, every month. So very regular is uh, what you can start to do when you have a tool like QA, because you can critique them very quickly. So that's a huge, huge benefit. And I'll touch on some of that in our case studies. Um, okay, so I'll share it for those who were uh, willing to vote, and there you go. So let's touch on how it works. So the way that we've built P6 QA, it's embedded in P6. So it's not a, another tool you got to log into. You don't have to do XCRs, all that. You bring your schedules into P6 or you critique the schedules you have in P6 and you validate a variety of things, okay? So you define the validations. So the typical ones, and I'm going to show you some of these, are duration validations, uh, logic validations, whether you've got leads or lags, so negative lags or positive lags is what they are called in P6. Um, and of course, whether your float is high or within an appropriate range, that's what you're looking for. That's from a scheduling perspective. Now we also validate costing items and we validate resourcing items as well. So we go beyond just the date validations okay and then you can put your own validations in to the system now when looking at logic we also look at constraints so hard and soft what are called hard and soft constraints and then we also have updating validations okay so i'm going to touch on those give you a feel for what's in the tool and keep keep in mind that if we don't have if i don't show you something that you want that doesn't mean we don't have it, okay? For sake of time, I won't be able to show you all the validations. And then the other thing we've done is we've added a lot of validations for various clients. So you can uh, go beyond even what we've already got currently. So in terms of some of the industry standards out there in the marketplace, there's many, um, and we adhere to the bulk of them uh, with what we've already got in place, and we can enhance those. Okay, so DCMA is pretty common, GAO, AAC, et cetera. All right, so that we've already got a huge framework in place to uh, validate things. Now, when it comes to some of the business processes, I'll show you some of them. Okay, so we, as I mentioned, we do resources, we do all the costing, so we do expenses as well as resources. And the nice thing about how we've put together the system is it's managed from p6 so you can set your validations up for the different types of projects your organization may may do so capital projects versus small opex projects or shutdowns and turnarounds outages you're going to need different criteria okay so we allow you to set the criteria uh, right inside the system and it can vary by project Okay, so it's very flexible and it can vary by stage. So if you're at the beginning stages of your project where it's a proposal or it's just at the um, ideation stage, you're, you may have a little more leeway as to how the schedule's been put together versus when it's further along, it's approved and you're in execution. Okay, so the validations can be changed over time. Um, okay, so I will uh, go ahead and jump into the software. And uh, let me get P6 going. And I'm going to show you some of our uh, reporting as well. 
that we've got in the system. So let me just get this screen sorted out and then off we go. Okay. Okay, so you should be seeing P6. And for today's um, webinar, I'm gonna show you P6 client. Now, all the things I'm gonna show you today can work in P6 web as well. So if you guys use the EPPM web platform, everything can work up there as well, equally, equally uh, in an equal fashion. Okay, so let me explain what you're looking at. So you are looking at a list of projects and a list of projects that have had P6QA run on them, okay? So in terms of controlling when QA runs, we have a very flex flexible setup. So we have a few fields um, in P6 that allow you to control how you want to run P6QA. So you might want it to automatically run every week, every day, every hour, monthly, or in my example, since I'm in a demo environment, I'm gonna manually run it for you, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna actually tell it to run at a certain point. And then when I do that, it's gonna go off and run the tool. Now, I'm gonna use this project that you see that I've got open, and right now I haven't run uh, P6QA on it. So I will do that in a minute. But before I do that, let's touch on what we're seeing in terms of some of the validations. So we have, as I mentioned, duration validations, float validations, constraint validations, logic val validations. Those are all what we call schedule uh, quality validations, or we've labeled them SQs, okay? Now you can change those names. Um, they are what we've labeled them as a generic. But if you wanna follow the DCMA validations with their specific logic, uh, third numbering conventions, the one through, through uh, 13, I think it is, you can um, have those labeled appropriately, okay? Each one of these can match up. So let's, take a look at what we've got down here in the notebook. Okay, so I'm just gonna enlarge that so we can see it in a bit more detail. So this is, um, we've got some validations here, as I mentioned, related to logic, um, to durations, float, et cetera. So we give you um, not only a layout with all these flags, but we also give you a summary. So that summary can be, it's in HTML, so you can email it out. You can copy and paste it into an email. You can copy and paste it into a Word file. You can have it automatically feeding a Word file. We can have it feeding, um, in our case, we're gonna show you our data warehouse, which is part of our P6 reporter, and you can put it into Power BI reports, okay? So there's a lot of things you can do with this format in and of itself. So we've got targets and we've got actual percentages and the percentages can be on the total project as well as just the remaining activities, okay? So the industry standards, some are on, our, some are on total number of activities and some are on remaining activities and some are on activity types, okay? Excluding things like level of efforts and milestones, et cetera. Okay, so we're adhering to all those different validation types. So this is your summary. And if you want more detail, you can scroll down and we've got more details here. Okay, so again, trying to give you all the best outputs for communicating where the gaps are and areas that you need to improve. Okay, now all of that summary is coming from the details. And the details, of course, are living and breathing at the next level of P6, so inside the activities. So what we do is we use out of the box functionality of P6 with layouts and user defined fields so that you can make the layouts however you wish, okay? So these ones I'm showing you are examples. You can make things that uh, 
suit your, your particular needs. So let's touch on some of them, okay? So logic missing. So if we have an open end, meaning we don't have a predecessor or a successor, we're gonna see that. Um, we're gonna see leads and lags. So do we have a negative, uh, negative uh, lag? Do we have a positive lag? And if so, some of the things we might wanna monitor is whether the lag is long, okay? So some of the criteria is you, you might be allowed to have leads or lags, but they can't be long, okay? Some of the criteria and validations are whether or not you're using primarily finish to starts. So we're seeing some of them don't have finish to start. Some of them have some finish to starts, but maybe not all, okay? Um, high float. So if we have high float, then that could be a problem, okay? It could be because we have an open end, so we didn't tie all the logic together, or there could be some other reason, okay? So you wanna monitor that. Now, one of the things that we added in this version are the actual data fields. So in this example, not only do we have an activity with a lot of float, and I can see this whole sequence has a lot of floats. So it's probably that I haven't finished doing my logic, okay? It's, that's what this is kind of hinting at, which is the case. These are new activities in this schedule and I haven't got to the logic yet, okay? So you need a little leeway when you're building, you're at the building stage of your schedule, but this is a good way to see it, okay? And I can see I have high float. Now high float can be, um, defined by uh, differently in, as I mentioned, in a turnaround project where you've got, uh, it's a small window, maybe 30 days, you're gonna want a float, a very reasonable small amount of float. So it might be a day or two of float, might be three days of float, five days of float, very small number. On a longer project, five years, 10 years, maybe up to 20 days of float, maybe up to 40 or 60 days of float is okay. So that's gonna vary by project. And this float is in hours, okay? So that's something to be aware of. P6 works everything in hours in the back end. You know, you might display it in days, you might display it in weeks, et cetera, but it's always working in hours. So that's what these are here, okay? So this is, how much additional float we have from our parameter. So that's a new field we've added and it allows us for additional graphing and histograms. And the same thing here for long durations. So if we have activities that have very long durations, we're flagging them here. Now that could be a good signal for you to maybe break that activity up into more activities. Okay, so those are uh, validations that we're trying to look at um, on the scheduling side. And then we have constraints, okay? So that's another one. So this is flagging whether or not we have a constraint and whether it's a hard or a soft constraint. Okay, so there's some criteria as to what that is. So a hard or a soft constraint. So um, if you're familiar with P6, some of these are hard constraints, so mandatories and start ons, finish ons, and this is what is called a soft constraint. So it's holding uh, the start, but it's allowing it to flex, so it can go a bit flexible. So that's called a soft constraint. Okay, so we're monitoring all that, and we're flagging them, and then we're counting them. And in some cases, we're monitoring the variance off of our criteria. So you can get a feel for how, um, how good the schedule is or how many gaps you still have to fill. Now, we want to, of course, also go beyond scheduling, okay? So really, we're ideally, you're trying to monitor not only when an activity is supposed to be done, but also who is supposed to be doing it because if you don't have enough resources it's going to impact your ability to deliver so we also um, check 
whether or not an activity has resources. So you can see here, this is flagged. So we're not tracking any resources, nor are we tracking any costs. So this is flagging that. So ideally, we want to have resources. Okay. And this could be two flags. If you're doing a lot of cost control, this would make sense to have a resource as well as an expense flag. Okay. So you can go many different ways, but we want to monitor the quality of all of our activities. That's what we're trying to do more automatically for you. Now, some of you who use P6 might say, well, I can do all this in P6. I've got these open end fields. I've got the constraint fields. You can, you can do some of it in P6, but you can't do it in such an easy manner. And you certainly can't do some of the, the items that we've got here, okay? So the idea with QA is we're going beyond what you can already do in P6 to make it easier. Okay, so let me run, uh, show you how you run the QA tool. So as I mentioned, I'm going to run this manually. So I've set it to be a project that will use QA. Um, so you don't have to run QA on every project. And in because it's a demo database, I'm going to run it manually, as I showed you there. So to run it right now, very easy for me to do. I just clear out the last date I ran it. I hit enter. I refresh, um, refresh my uh, P6, and it's that's all I need to do to tell it to run. Okay, so I can run it whenever I want, and it's going to take a, some length of time, and it's going to depend on how big your project is. It's going to depend on the last time you ran it, um, and whether it's starting from scratch or just updating. Okay, so in my case, I had run it before. And so it was just updating. And uh, so it's running through, oops, and here it is. Sorry, just bounced around. So now I can see the flags here rolled up, summarized up to my project level. So this is super handy for even your senior schedulers to help, help you um, because they can quite easily see how well each one of these projects are doing. And maybe if I've still got a lot of gaps in my project, maybe my senior scheduler can uh, coordinate a meeting or help look at some of these. Or I could say, hey, look, I've got some of these issues. What suggestions do you have? So this really bumps up your ability to communicate where you're at uh, within your own team as well as, of course, externally to any uh, companies that you're critiquing their schedules. Okay, now let me show you how I controlled these validations. So how did I tell it uh, whether it should be a green, a red, or a yellow uh, visual for me to know where I'm at? Okay, and what are the statistics I'm using to control this one? It's a high duration. This example is a high float. Okay, so it's counting and uh, it, keeping the statistics for me. So for each one of these validations, I have the ability to control them in P6. Um, so I have other layouts that I built to show the criteria. So I've got various layouts here that I'm using, and that's exactly how hard this is to set up, okay? You can manage it yourself once we help deploy the validations, because you don't necessarily want to use all of them. Um, it depends on the quality standards you're trying to adhere to. And then once you've got the validations set up, you can manage it yourself, okay? So there's a little consulting that we need to incorporate when you buy the tool. But it's only, it's generally um, depends on your deployment, but maybe a few weeks at most of assistance is generally what we've experienced with our clients on the rollout. Okay, so what you're seeing here are the validations. So this is saying, 
as long as I have less than 5% of activities with what we consider a high duration, and in this example, a high duration is 120 hours. Okay, so again, everything's in hours. Um, so as long as I have less, less than 5% of my activities that are 120 hours or more, then I would get a green check mark. Otherwise, I would get a red stop sign. For float, as long as I have 10%, so uh, 10 out of 100 activities or less with 40 hours of float, or um, then it would be a green check mark. Okay, so I'm setting those up. Now, some of these would have uh, the ability to have a yield sign as well, because there's a high and a low sort of, um, or a, a warning kind of metric. Okay, so some will have that as well. Okay, um, not all of them will have that. All right, so this is how hard it is to set these up. Now, as I get more and more into my execution, I may want to uh, bump these down or I might want to change the durations, right? So some projects, if they're longer projects, it might make sense to allow a longer duration. If I'm at very early stage of my project planning, I might need to allow longer durations because, you know, I might not have the project. So it doesn't make sense for me to spend all the energy doing large amounts of detail. So you need to allow some flexibility in the way that you set up your criteria, okay? And that's what I'm trying to show you here. And these are what are feeding the flagging that we saw in the last, uh, last layout. Now, let me go to some additional types of uh, metrics and monitoring validations that you might wanna do, okay? So this is what we call business process validations. So activity ID formatting. So some of our clients have specific formats that they want the activity ID to follow. Okay. So you might want some numbers, some letters, you might want a certain number of digits. So that's something we can input to see whether the activities are following the format or not. Um, we might want to see whether our activity naming conventions are clean and whether we have any duplicates, because that's not a good practice is to have any duplicate activity names, because that's confusing. Um, activity types. So you might have a preference on the activity types you're using, depending on your standards. Okay. Um, so this is just checking all of those validations mandatory codes. So we don't have anything called a mandatory code in P6, but we can introduce the concept with some of our other tool P6 calculator functionalities. So you can have some that are set as mandatory in your project. Okay, so we've got a lot of additional um, processes that we can monitor. So we monitor things like roles things like resources. Um, do we have a primary resource set? So in this case, I'm missing some and I'm also missing some roles. Okay, so those are things we can monitor. So let me go and show you some of those. So again, I've just got a matching layout. So I've got a layout that matches the, um, the project level and I can go and look at the same validations. Okay, so this is the best way to use it, is you have some matching layouts that give you the validations. Okay, so I'll just scroll up to the top so you can see some of these. So in this case, I'm grouped by um, activity type. Okay, some of the way that you handle a milestone will be different than the way you handle what's called a level of effort or what used to be called a hammock in P3. Um, so you might want to look, you, you're going to treat those a little different. Um, so if I want it to look at some of the roles or 
primary resource validations. I'll touch on those. So this will be a good one for us to look at. So some of you may not know that we can have roles and resources in PSIG. So it's a multi-layer uh, strategy when you're doing resourcing. We also have role teams and resource teams that show up in the web. So the web has some really nice reporting features related to resourcing. Um, and um, we, we will have a webinar uh, in January, likely January, February on P6 in the web. Okay, for those of you who are interested in understanding more, uh, stay tuned for that. So this is letting me know that I've got a resource. I've got a resource, but I'm missing a role. Okay, so if my business process says everything needs a role, I need to address that right here. Okay, so that's letting me see that because it's not easy to see that um, in, in P6. It's, uh, it's a bit hidden. So this makes it more transparent. And then primary resource. So usually we set which resource is the main resource doing the work and which resource is a supporting resource. So that's what we usually use the primary for. So that's what that's letting me know is I'm missing a primary. So we would normally have a primary resource. Now, when I rerun this, this one should clear up. And uh, if I applied a role, let's see what I've got here. I've got a role here, so I just missed it. So if I rerun this, this should clear up, okay? So I'll go ahead and run it, um, and then I'll jump right back so we can see it in action. Okay, so I'm gonna run this, whoops, that's not what I want to do, just make this a bit wider. So as soon as I clear this out, because I've got it set to run uh, manually, I clear out the date, I reset it, and then I should go over here, and hopefully I can show it live, but it might already run it. Okay, so it hasn't fixed itself yet. So we'll just rerun this. And we should see these, these two clear out on, am I on the right one? Yes, I am. Yeah, okay, so there's one going to green. And the rule should also clear itself out. So I'll just refresh it again. And hopefully this goes to green if I've done it right. Oh, it's not. Okay, so maybe it's just taking another minute or maybe I've also missed something else, but hopefully you get the idea of how it works. Yeah, looks like it's not going to, so I might've just done something wrong. Um, so that's the idea of how this, this works is it works through and it clears out as you improve. Okay, so that's the whole gist of how we built it is we want it to be working as you go, okay? Um, I'll touch on one more on cost accounts. So if you're doing using cost accounts, same thing here. We should have, we want to make sure everything has a cost account. Otherwise, your cost account reports will not be complete. Okay, so we're trying to make sure there's no gaps in what we're reporting on. Okay, so again, uh, we will do a webinar in the uh, new year. It will be P6 Calculator showing the kind of costing you can do in P6. And we'll touch more on cost accounts in that webinar, okay? So if you're interested in learning more about uh, resourcing and um, costing, stay tuned for that P6 calculator webinar. Um, okay, so I think that gives you a feel for resources, roles, gives you a feel for the schedule validations. Let me touch on updating validations. Okay, so you can see here we have the same project and we've updated it the first time, the second time. So let's go look at some updating validations. Uh, let's just make that a bit bigger. Here we go. I've got some already preset. So updating validations. Now, they're hugely important because once you've put your, uh, all your work into planning, you want to keep monitoring how your schedule is coming together 
on your updates. So we want to look at things like durations. Um, you can, so the duration validations are starting to go past just the original or planned duration. And we're starting to look at remaining duration as well. So if our remaining duration is getting bigger than our original duration, well, that's a good flag. That's a big flag for you. So that's what this one is letting us know. We have some of those taking place. Um, now, good thing on our second update, it looks like we have less of those taking place. So as we're progressing, we were able to mitigate our durations that were starting to grow. Uh, if your durations are growing, it's likely you're going to start to run late. Okay, so that's why you want to monitor that explicitly. Um, activities that finished late. Okay, so again, we want to be monitoring that explicitly. Okay, now again, you can sort of do these things in P6 out of the box, but not nearly as easily and cleanly as what we've got with QA. Um, now we want to be looking at other things like, do we have uh, activities that start it that don't have any resources updated? Okay, so if I start it and I'm progressing, but I have no actuals on my resource, it usually means I've missed an update. Okay, and I might not have a good sense of what's going on. So that's why we want to flag that very, very clearly. Um, other things we want to flag, of course, are um, do I have any activities that finished um, before, uh, sorry, after my data date? Sorry, got that backwards. Um, so if my data date is, uh, let's say, the 1st of December, but I've said that my actual finish is the 8th of December, that's a bit weird. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean it's wrong because I may have had to do the update early, but normally I would have set my data date. So let's say I'm forecasting to the end of the week, to this week. So the end of the week might be the 9th of December. So I would normally set my data date to the 9th of December as well. Okay, so this could just be a mistake in the way I did the data date. So we wanna be monitoring all of this. And uh, you particularly want to monitor these things if you're receiving the schedule from a third party because you don't know what they've put in and you want to make sure there's no mistakes, there's no errors. Okay, so those are the sorts of things we're monitoring in these updates. So I can open the update and uh, I can open a matching layout at the activities. Okay, so I'll just open that other project and I'll open the updating layout. And then I can start to take a look at what I've got here. Okay, so this layout's organized a little differently. I've organized it by the start date or expected start date of the activity. So by month in this example, okay. And I can see whether I've got any problems with the update, okay? So in this case, my actual dates are after my data date, um, which is not common. That's, as I just mentioned, that's not correct. Now my data date is a little old because this is a demo database. It's not being updated regularly. So my uh, data date here is the 23rd of June. So that's the date that I took the updates to, and I can see that I've, my finish date is in August. Okay, so that's probably a mistake. So again, this is something you want to validate and double check. It may be that I forgot to move my data date, but it could be that I put in the wrong finish date. Okay, so I have to fix that. And this is not obvious uh, out of the box in P6. Okay, so just for this, it can be quite, quite a good find. As I mentioned, we're looking at our uh, actual durations versus our original durations. Okay, so this is, this is uh, one that's showing that it's over. Okay, so we can see that. Now, you might say, well, that's just one day over. You know, I don't necessarily wanna have a red mark on that. So what we've got 
it built into the system throughout is, okay, so I've seen that this is truly not adhering to the criteria. I am over by one day, but one day might be within my range of tolerance. So I can use this blue star concept, which means it's going to now see this as a red, but it's going to override it or overrule it. And it's not going to show it as a red because as a team, we've agreed, I don't want to keep looking at this one. Okay. So I've, I've acknowledged it and I've overwritten it with the blue star. So we've got that throughout the system, which is really handy because you don't want validations to keep coming over and over again. Okay. Um, things like milestones or the start of a project or the finish of a project. That's a good example where you will have an open end. So it's okay to have that and you don't want it to keep showing as a red. Okay. So we've got this idea of an override in the system. Um, okay. Let me see what else. Um, right. Okay. So in this case, this is showing that the activity hasn't been updated, something's been missed on there. So resources are over budget. That's a very important one because um, we want to make sure, you know, why? Why did we go 40 hours over? Uh, what is the reasoning there? Okay, now it's important to critique why. It's not just putting in the data and walking away. I did my updates. You need to critique that because you might have similar activities that you're gonna perform. Let's say it's an engineering work package, or let's say it's a fabrication work package. You wanna be critiquing that because you wanna make sure as a team, you come up with strategies to make sure that you don't go over on the next round, okay? So that's why flagging these things is so important. And again, Yes, maybe you can run global changes and you can put flags in with global changes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but we're doing it all for you, okay? So there's huge savings in having it automated. And uh, that's what P6QA brings to the table. Um, okay, I think I've given you a flavor of all the updates all the different metrics. Now we've got more. We've got many more that we could run. Um, the, the point really is to give you an idea of the breadth that we've got, the different out of the box um, industry standard validations that we've already got, and then food for thought if you wanna go further, okay? So some of our clients have integrations and the integrations need to have certain things happening, certain updates put into them. So we're giving them flags for where those have been missed, okay? Um, if you're doing scheduling, which you probably are, um, you know updating can be quite hectic. So there's, it's easy to miss things, okay? Now, this is another example of different validations that we can do. So we had a client that wanted all the calendars to be consistent in terms of the start and finish times. So we have a validation for their calendars to highlight anywhere that the calendar is different. Okay, so we're monitoring that. Um, and uh, so you can see this quite clearly that we've got some different dates here and it's letting us know whether we've got a problem on any of them, okay? So one of the problems could be that the hours are different. So in this case, we can see our diff we've got different times. So we can monitor very in-depth uh, things. So if you have some spe special situations, then let us know. I'm sure we can, we can tackle them. Now, sometimes, the reporting you're going to want needs to go beyond just these flags and these uh, lists that we've got. So we've also uh, used our P6 reporter engine to snapshot the data that's in P6 and allow you to put that data out 
into your corporate reporting standard. So in this example, I'm showing it in Power BI. Okay, but if you have a different software tool that's your standard in your organization, we can get the same sort of graphics output into those tools. Okay, so we've done a lot of work on uh, business objects on Tableau, Power BI. Um, we've also used the Oracle tools, the uh, Oracle Data Ballot Visualization. Okay, so the end tool is not as much of the issue as the engine that we've got with snapshotting. So that's our P6 reporter tools. These are two separate tools that I'm showing you, but I'm just giving you food for thought on where you can go with the validations and how you can output them. So in this example, I've got different snapshots and I've got them monthly. And because I'm snapshotting them into our warehouse, which is part of P6 Reporter, I can then report on them. And I can um, report on them all together, and I'll show you that in a minute. Or I can show one project at a time and have a dashboard for that project. So that's what I'm showing you here. Um, and some of these are very helpful in terms of seeing the order of magnitude of problem. So in this example, in this DCMA six high float, you can see I've got a way too many activities with high float. So that would lead me to conclude that I'm probably not finished my logic. I've probably got a lot of, a lot of logic problems. And yeah, lo and behold, right here, I've got a lot of missing logic. So you can see it's a very high number. Um, now, I have some constraints as we saw on that uh, previous visual, but no hard constraints, which is, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, what else can I see very quickly? So I've got some activities that uh, haven't been updated. I can see that I've got resources that are missing. So this is a really handy chart to get an order of magnitude feeling, okay? Because just seeing a number uh, that I've got 10 missing doesn't really give you the order of magnitude, okay? So this is a really handy kind of visual on getting a feel for how far away from being a good schedule you've got. Now we can go deeper. We could go into some deeper um, analysis as well. So, or we, in this example, I've got them sort of split into two different validation uh, sections, okay? So there's lots of different ways you can represent the graphics. And then you see here, I've got sort of that same sort of um, notebook in here. So this, this is very handy. And then in this example, I'm toggling to different months and different periods, okay? But you could also show them side by side in the dashboard. So you can see it more obviously together. So there's lots of different ways to represent it. Um, now, so I mentioned the side by side. So this is an example of something that you're showing more side by side, in this case, one on top of the other. So this could be a very handy way of looking at things. So I can go back to different months, Okay, and again, this is demo data, so it's maybe not the most interesting. And I can see whether things are changing on these on these graphics. Okay, so that can be super handy. And I can also um, look at the tables in a more um, share them out beyond notebooks. Okay, so the, the handy part about a tool like Power BI is you can share that out to a broader audience that might need to see it. So your project manager, who might be the lead, who's gonna go talk to the contractor that sent you the schedule, has the data at his, his or her fingertips as well. Now, my management might want to see more of um, a dashboard, a portfolio of what's going on with the with the schedule, okay? 
So this is multiple schedules, like I was showing you in P6, and this is the last six months. And you want to see things getting better, not getting worse. Okay, so in this example, you can see this is getting worse. So I need to be checking that and trying to address that and get that fixed up. Now, in this example, I'm doing the monthly, but you can see down here, this is obviously a project that's getting weekly updates. Okay, so you can mix and match them um, in these sort of different visuals. And this is the DCMA sort of output, but I've got the government of accountability output and we've got the naval air outputs already in here. Okay, so we've, these are again, just some of the ideas. You can do your own as well. These are just some of the industry standards that we've put together. Um, now, we can get into the details and different visuals, graphical visuals, okay? So you might prefer an output like this that has a bit more explanation. And rather than seeing a tabular format, you have more of a chart format, okay? So again, lots of different ways to represent this data. And I can see here that I've got some more work to do on my uh, logic, okay? So you can see the different visuals there. Okay, um, so lots of different ways to do the output and we can get right down into activities. And in this case, activities per month. That way I can see how I'm doing and where my gaps are. Okay, so this one can be very handy um, to also merge with an, uh, more of a statistical histogram. So in this case, I'm showing how many activities have high durations in my project, but I'm looking at monthly. Now the benefit to this, okay, and this one is quite a long one. The benefit to this is you don't want a lot of long activities later in your project because that's implying that I haven't done all the legwork, the detailed legwork. So that could really come back to haunt me later in my schedule. So that's the benefit of this sort of representation um, is to understand not only that I have the problem, but where in the schedule is the problem. Because the later the problem, the more this could come back to haunt me. Okay, so being able to see these um, chronologically is hugely important as well, okay? And uh, the variances. So how many activities do I have that have a large duration, but how big are those durations? So that's more of a scale, an order of magnitude that I'm trying to look at. So if I've got a lot of activities with uh, lags, I want to see that. Or if I have a lot of activities that are have late, they're... Uh, um, have been late, it's important for me to see because this could give me an idea that it was just a bad month or whether it's an ongoing problem, okay? So my data in here is not that wonderful because it is demo data. Um, but hopefully you get the idea of the different types of histogramming that we can do and the different outputs and how valuable they can be in your conversations. Uh, internally, as well as with the contractors, engineering firms, putting the schedules together. Okay, I don't see any questions just yet, but if you do have any, go ahead, put them in the question area. And I'll go back to the um, PowerPoint to wrap up. Okay, um, Okay. so hopefully you've seen things that could be of interest to you. Um, as I've shown you, you put the validations in, you run the analysis, you can output the analysis, and of course you wanna be fixing the problem. Um, if you prefer to publish a formal report, you know, we have pushed this uh, through BI Publisher into a 
Word document with a formal report. So there's lots of different outputs. And of course, I showed you the sort of dashboarding outputs, which are becoming more and more important to our clients. If there's something that we're seeing a trend on, it's more and more dashboarding. Um, okay, I do see one quick question. Um, in the current demo example, is it safe to assume that data date is the reason for most of the uh, logic missing validation? Um, curious, curious to know if a tolerance range could be manually accommodated to data date entries while validating. Okay. Um, I think rather than having a tolerance, my preference would be to coach the people not to forecast, as I was mentioning. So if I did my updates today, but I'm trying to forecast to Friday, I would prefer coaching people to move the data date to Friday rather than putting a two-day um, two range, if you will, on it. That would be my preference. I think it's just a cleaner way to do it. Uh, because really, we are trying to say I'm forecasting up to what we expect to do on Friday. Okay, so that would be my preference. So I don't think right now we have a tolerance on that. But if that's the way you want it to run it, yeah, we could introduce such a thing. Okay, but I think my preference would be to get them to um, use the data date move. I think it's cleaner, it's less confusing, and I think it's some. Um, it's a more appropriate way to go. That would be my take. Okay, so hopefully I answered your question. I Hopefully I understood that correctly. Now we also have a validation that checks whether or not we've rescheduled based on the current date. Okay, so, so that validation would be, were today, how long ago was the last time you scheduled and moved the data date, okay? So that, that is also an important one because we don't want projects being left behind and not having data dates move. So we have that validation as well, which can be super handy, okay? All right, um, so let's touch on some of the feedback that we've got from our clients using P6QA. So some of the, some of the teams that we work with they don't have full-time schedulers doing all of their evaluations so that we have a scheduling project controls team that are their backstops or their assistants. So when you're not a full-time scheduler, this can be a huge, huge benefit. Um, one of the case studies uh, that was my, my client that I worked with was a developer in New York doing a $600 million pencil tower in New York. Um, and the project had over 8,000 activities. And I critiqued that schedule blind, like I didn't know anything about it. Uh, we did it as a service in less than four hours. So I ran P6QA. I gave the report. I did a follow-up uh, meeting and uh, webinar with the client. And he was the finance person. Uh, knew, you know, he knew enough about scheduling, but not enough to jump in deep. And for a few hours of work, and um, I was able to give him very good feedback. The critical path was not uh, consistent. The activities were all over the place. There was a lot of open end. So it really saved him a lot of stress, frustration. And uh, it took me less than four hours to get to evaluate a, a, I think it was 8,000 activity schedule. Okay, so this tool can be super helpful. And if, if you're not sure if you need it ongoing and you want it as a service, that's something we do offer as well as a consulting service. Um, the standards, okay, the standards is really why we built this tool. Okay, now I don't need a contract to, I don't need as much help to get a contractor schedule analyzed. So that's really important. We're trying to empower our clients. Now, hopefully you saw the speed of it is very good. And that's, again, that example I just gave you um, and the quality. Okay. So you can start to get the quality of your critical path improved, which is hugely important. So your end date that you're forecasting is accurate. 
Okay, so I answered the questions I've seen so far. If you have any, go ahead and throw them in and we'll address them while we close out. Um, so, so hopefully you saw something of interest, um, especially if you're struggling on analyzing the schedules quickly and getting that validation out. So this is one of our tools, the P6QA tool. And I did show you our P6 reporter tool in some of that dashboarding. Now we have lots of other tools, okay? So certainly take a look at our webinar schedule. Um, uh, we probably don't have it up for January fully, but we'll get that up in the next few days. And uh, we have a P6 loader tool, which loads in, in and out data from Excel. So fantastic tool for cleaning up, for maintaining, for building schedules, for updating schedules. We have updating tools, our TAPS tool, our CAPS tool. Uh, we also sell team member uh, if you're looking at the Oracle tool. Um, I'm missing one. Oh yeah, P6 calculator. So um, the foundation of QA is our calculator tool, but our calculator tool can automate other things. So that's a really interesting one. And it is one of the ones I'm gonna show for deep dive on costing and resource management in P6. And we'll have that up in our uh, webinar schedule for January. Um, so if there's more info you want, you've got Sue's email there and her phone number and Donna who's in the Philippines. You can reach out to Donna as well and uh, get in contact that way.